Hello. Hi. Jason. Yeah. yeah no, this is, he just said no, no. Just speak to him. Okay. <laughs> well, not a problem, so, Warren. I mean, I yeah, it's, it's, well, it's good to speak to you because uh, this is, um, um, you are sort of the, the, the youngest um, of the surviving members, would, would I say? Would, would that be right in saying? Uh, not in actual age. <laughs> in, in time served, yes. But not in age. I'm the oldest, but I'm the, uh, the newest. I've been in the band 11 years, and uh, Simon and Nick. Nick's been in about 18, so I've been in about 17. Mm. So you... But um, as I say, um, the well, the the four year gap now that you've had since your full your last sort of full length album, the, the wedding album, and then obviously um, two years between. Thank you. Um, how would you sort of describe the the band sort of climb back in the nineties? Because it was pretty much, you know, Duran Duran coming back in the nineties. Now, uh, how would you sort of describe that? Well, it was a it was a fantastic time when I mean we knew when we wrote. Uh, ordinary world and come undone and those songs on the way out that we had something very strong and it was you know very gratifying that the whole world kind of took to it all right they said it was a comeback well i guess it was because the you know the two previous albums didn't really do that well mm. um but then uh you know we went out on the road did a very successful tour and and then uh, put out the covers album mm. which people just didn't really like you know, i liked it you know, we, we, yeah, I know, but I mean, on, on the whole, as far as like you know, rating it success, yes. success wise, it, mm. just didn't, it didn't sell enough units, it didn't chart high enough in the chart. Um, but you know, we can't take all the blame because it wasn't our song. But mm. now, this mm. album, The Dazzle Land, is the natural kind of follow up to the wedding album where we've honed all of our skills again as writers and producers and, and you know, put out our own music again. Mm. And I think we've, you know, we've taken it up at least another, you know, thousand percent mm, 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 mm. and um, so I mean you know this, this record should be I think as big now in the 90s as any one of our previous albums was in the 80s sure sure because I mean any band um, that has a history as long as Duran Duran's uh, people always sort of tend to go back and make those comparisons but um, I think what's nice now is that the the most direct reference point would be uh, you know the wedding album as, as far as the 90s are concerned, and um, as, I say, as you say, a thousand percent is good. Yeah, I mean, the wedding album is where, you know, the new Duran Duran really found its identity. You know, we were kind of floundering in the last few years of the 80s, you know, really trying to find what we were about. Uh, you know, we were solidifying, uh, again, as a writing team. And now, you know, it's been a few years that we've been doing this. I mean, we've been writing together, the three of us, since 1989, you know, mm -hmm. so we've, we've been doing it a few years, plus, you know, we have so much material now, and in the process of making the Dazzling, we threw out so many songs, because, you know, not only do, you know, fans and critics look back and compare, we, as artists, you know, are always wanting to top what we've done before, you so know? you don't want to go backwards in mm -hmm. any way, and I think a lot of bands that, that are around for a long time that might still be very big draw, you know, as far as what concert ticket sales go. Uh, a lot of times their records don't in any way, shape, or form come close to their previous records. Sure, sure, sure. And, uh, and they're just kind of like, you know, they're a, you know, they're almost, uh, you know, an institution, you know, some of these groups, and they go out there and they can sell a lot of concert tickets, but mm -hmm. they're not writing a great song anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't ever want to do that. Sure. You know? We do it for the song. Mm -hmm. We don't do it because we want to go out and play, you know, shows every year or every five years. So we, we, we're constantly creating new music mm -hmm. that excites us. Absolutely, yeah, because that's where it starts, absolutely, yeah. Mm. yeah. And uh, the, the album's first single, which was uh, um, Out of My Mind, which was obviously taken from, um, was also the first single for The Saint. Soundtrack. Yeah. And really the, the, the first single from The Saint soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is on the Dazzler. Sure. Mm. How, how did that actually happen? Because, I mean, look, Duran Duran in the past have obviously, um, you know, they've had their James Bond uh, inclusion, but uh, were you guys approached to, to do that song specifically for that album before releasing, before going in and recording the album, the new album? 
No, it was all very coincidental. Nick and I were working with someone from Paramount on another project, and um, we saw a list of upcoming releases that he had scheduled for Paramount, mm -hmm. and uh, strategically placed around in the March area, which we thought was going to be around the time of the Dazzleland release. We said, mm, same, that sounds like a good thing, you know, British kind of spy thing. So sure. we know that area. Yeah. Um, why don't, why don't we do something for that? Why don't Duran Duran do something for that? And he said, oh, yeah, you got any music you can let me hear? Right. And we said, uh, sure. You know, we gave him a tape of three songs, and he went back and uh, played the stuff for Philip Noyce, the director, and mm. one of the songs, Out of My Mind, he absolutely loved. Right. Because he said it tied in, you know, lyrically it tied in with the, uh, the, the kind of the character struggle that Val Kilmer was going through and the relationship he had with a childhood uh, friend and, and a woman that he was now recording you know, right. the two character, mm. and also the um, the instruments that we used on that track you know there was a lot of eastern influence mm. and uh, you know it, it really kind of suited the location that, that the movie was shot in you know it kind of evoked uh, something about you know like the eastern Russian thing you know there was some melodies that were played on Indian instruments mm. and Philip said you know you couldn't have if I gave you the script explained everything to you and showed you the film you couldn't have written a, a more appropriate film. Mm. So it was just a complete, you know, lock, really. Right, right. And how... how hadn't seen the film right. or anything, you know, we just gave them the song. Right. And how, how, far, how far you were you um, with the album at that point um, when giving him those tracks? How many, how many of the album tracks had you put together? Um, well, this album was definitely done in, in stages. I mean, it was a finished album. Mm -hmm. It was a finished album. The guy took a finished mix with him. But in December, uh, we decided to reevaluate what we had. Mm -hmm. December of 96, that's when John Taylor left the band. Yes. And we thought, well, what is this record that we have here? You know, is this what we want to put out? Is this strong enough? You know, we haven't, you know, this is our, you know, this is our follow up to the wedding album, really. Is this as good as it? Mm -hmm. And there was one or two songs that we really liked, or three songs. And then we got rid of a lot of other things. We wrote six new songs mm -hmm. uh, between December and uh, the beginning of March. Mm -hmm. And all six of them are on the album. And they're like the best track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because now, now that the, the band is down to, uh, to two or three members, um, how, how did that actually affect the band? Did it, uh, was it a difficult, a difficult thing to lose another member in the band, or did it actually bring the, the balance of the band? It was closer? difficult emotionally. You know, it was like, wow, you know, this guy who's our friend for years and he's been there since the beginning doesn't really want to do it anymore. Mm. Uh, you know, it was kind of a drag. But I have to say, it was, it was a long time coming because he's lived in LA since 1992. We're all based right center of London. Mm -hmm. So we're always here, Simon, myself, and Nick. Mm -hmm. And John was always in Los Angeles. Now, um, John has been pursuing solo projects. Yes. Uh, I have been myself, but I don't need a lot of time to do them. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, it's a very kind of niche market. You know, the stuff I'm doing is instrumental guitar music, so mm -hmm. it's not going to really reach a lot of people. It's not the kind of thing to go out and tour to support. Sure. I want to get that music out there. Absolutely. And uh, Nick and I started a band called TD Mania, and we've been uh, writing and producing uh, our own stuff, and also for other people like Blondie, we wrote two songs for Blondie, mm. to make mm -hmm. a new album. so we've been doing all these different things, Thanks. you know, right. and, uh, but John, for some reason, felt that he just only wanted to do the other things, and didn't right. want to be in a collaborative situation anymore, and a lot of it was really geographical, mm. you know, it was too much of a, a brain drain for him to think he had to come all the way over to London just to work for whatever to play his bass on three things or to help write some songs, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think he actually helped us make a much better record by leaving mm -hmm. because we just kind of reevaluated everything and said, well, we got to make, we got to write a bunch of new songs, you know. Mm -hmm. So musically, I think it affected it in a positive way. Sure, sure. And then, uh, you know, it's a much stronger album. And I wonder, I wonder, even though I know that John feelings were very deep-rooted mm. that he wanted to leave, you know, it's been brewing him for, for years. Mm. I wonder if we had the album that, that is ready right now, mm. if he would have left. Yeah, mm, 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 mm. yeah, I hear what you're saying, absolutely. You know, I really don't know. Mm, mm. 
And uh, getting back to sort of an obvious one as far as the title of the album is concerned, uh, does it sort of have any significance or any kind of uh, pertinent meaning? Do we have any what? I just said. Um, the, the, the title of the, of the album, Medazzaland, uh, does it? Does yeah. It, does it oh, oh, that's a great story behind that one. Uh-huh. Um, you know, we record at my house, right? Mm-hmm. All, all of our stuff we do in my home studio there. And um, we were expecting Simon to come do some singing. Mm-hmm. It's like, he's supposed to be there at 1, and it's more like 4.30, you know? Mm-hmm. And we go, what the hell's going on with this guy? Turns out he had been sick to the dental surgeon. Mm-hmm. Hello? I'm here, don't worry. You're there. I am here. Weird. I, I think it's a cell phone. Hold on a second. Okay. Let me just see if I can get this. Okay. He's got a mobile phone here that I have to turn on. No problem. Yeah, I'm here. This is a nightmare. There's a snore or something. Let me pick up the other line and get away from you. Okay, okay. Hello? Yeah. I'll hang up the other phone. Okay. Yeah, so anyway, he, he's at this dental surgeon and he administered this drug. Right. Dazzlelin, right? Okay. And the thing about he explained the thing about this drug. You see, a phone was ringing, Charlie. You better take it out of here. This is bad. The thing about this drug is that it, once you're under the influence of it, you can respond to questions. Well, I'm telling the same story that he just he just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing is, you can actually respond to the questions while while the, you know while you're under the influence of this drug uh-huh. because this, I guess there's certain things that dentists need you to do and. You sure. know, hear him and understand, but after the, 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 the drug wears off, you you don't remember anything. <laughs> so Simon shows up at the door and goes, yeah, and he told me the story, uh-huh. and he said, you know, I don't even know, I've lost three hours of my life, oh my God, I don't even know what I was doing. I said, I don't know, we even know where I am. I said, yeah, I know who you are, you're in the dazzle land. <laughs> and we just thought, you know, mm, there you sounds go. like a song title, or maybe an album title, and then it stuck, you know, it just, it just has this, it's something, it, it's something nice about a word that really isn't a word. Sure. Like, or an imaginary place, especially when, you know, when you get a story like that. Absolutely, yeah. It's the one you hear every day. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was listening uh, back to a a listening cassette of the album yesterday, and um, there seemed to be um, sort of a great many influences on the album. I mean, you've uh, you've mentioned the Eastern influence already, but... uh, uh, was that sort of a, a conscious thing that you wanted to bring in a lot of sort of uh, different influences on the new album? No, it's just, um, you know, some songs, you know, when you're working on it, you go, you know, I hear this on this one. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, you just know it's going to work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you seek, seek those sounds out or those people out to do it. And sure enough, it, it's just the way you imagined it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not like, oh, we got to do a song that has Indian people want it, or we have to do a song that has this guy or that guy, no. Um, you know, music is, you know, the way we treat it, and the way, the way it happens, it's a very intuitive thing, it's almost like a channeling process, you know, I believe, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, there's, there's never any preconceived notions, but once those initial germs of the songs, or whatever they might be, are there, mm-hmm. we're very kind of calculated about how to bring it to its fullest, you know, we're just so good at it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, taking our, you know, utilizing our own production values, you know, in our own studio, in our own technology that we that we have in our studio. Well, you know, we mm-hmm. have total control over it, and uh, we're very shrewd and calculated when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. And, and we uh, have a vision for how that piece should sound. Well, we'll get it to sound that way. Sure, sure, and. As I said, as far as the band's concerned, I mean, that um, Duran Duran have actually achieved, I mean, great heights, obviously, over the, the length of the, uh, you know, of, of your careers. But uh, what is what is actually left? What is, uh, do, you, do you still sort of have a specific goal, especially, say, with the new album? Do you, do you see it being in a certain place or, um, you know, for it? Well, yeah, I mean, at the moment, we kind of feel, and I said this a couple of years ago when we were first working on this record, uh, I told some of the people from Virgin that you know, I really feel that where we are right now is kind of like where the Stones were right before they put out Miss You. Mm-hmm. 
you know, <laughs> that's all. And uh, that's kind of the way we look at it, you know. Uh, we're not trying to be like anybody else. We're not trying to be like the Rolling Stones. But I'm just saying, as far as our, as our, our um, recorded history goes, I think we're just about at that point now. Mm. And we are writing excellent songs. And I don't think there's any reason why uh, they shouldn't appeal to a mass audience. Mm, mm, mm. So for us, you know, the thing we're always aiming for is, is chart success. Because mm. that's the only gauge that you have right now uh, to see how uh, you know people are responding to your music, people are buying your music, people are enjoying your music. Mm. 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 And 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 if you had sort of had to look at it, what what would you actually attribute um, Duran Duran's sort of longevity to? I mean, a band that has gone so yeah, an incredibly deep passion for creating. Right. You know, we love music, and, and you know, there's no way that. <laughs> Any one of the three of us can, you know, could go by a week without having to, uh, you know, with having you know, having the need to, to create something fresh, something mm. new. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's part of you. Mm. And 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 if if you look at the new album, would you would you say that it's a, a good reflection of where of where Duran Duran are today? Yeah, I think it's more than any record we've ever made. I believe that this album has got it, it's just so clear on every song. Where, what we wanted to achieve with the song, you know, there there isn't any, you know, sometimes albums have gaps in them. Mm. Sometimes songs have gaps. In them. True. You know, with this record, there is not. There's, there's just we've nailed it. You know, we've kept it short. Mm. You know, deliberately because you know a lot of the records that we loved as, as when we were growing up, you know, and that influenced us were you know two sides of vinyl, you know, mm -hmm. something like maybe eighteen minutes a side, you know, nineteen minutes a side. Mm -hmm. Well, we've gone a little bit further than that, but I mean, it's, it's still a very short album that, you know, where you could, you don't have to skip tracks, you know, it flows beautifully, mm -hmm. it's full of great melodies and interesting textures, and, you know, it's everything you'd want in a record, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not a all-out dance kind of, you know, electronica album, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, or it's not a, a, a trip-hop album, it's not a, you know, there aren't any real labels you can put on it, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, it's, it, it, it's a real album to kind of write out the 90s too, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it makes you feel good, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And as I say, I mean, in putting the album together, were you sort of very aware of what was happening sort of musically around you and in the sense of incorporating that into into Duran Duran's sound in the 90s? I'm always aware of what's on, what's on around us. Um, you know, we, we're all music lovers. Um, but we don't take it to the extent that some other artists do. Um, you know, I think the, the gist of where our music is coming from is from the, is from the past. You know, the, the great songwriters that, that, that have been around, you know, before us. Um, the stuff that's around, you know, currently, mm -hmm. um, it just reeks too much of, of like, trend. Mm. And, you know, you see somebody like David Bowie, who I have the utmost respect for. Sure. But he'll go out and make a record with, like, identical grooves to mm. something that you heard last week. You sure. Know? sure. And to me, that, that's not, he's, he's beyond that, you know, mm. because he used, to, he used to be the trend, you mm. know. True. Uh, I, I think he should be kind of more true to, to himself. But then again... He's done so much, and that's what he wants to do. Mm. He can't, you know, if he wants to do a Tin Machine album again, he can't say, well, why do that? Because he's done so much. True, you know? true, yeah. You but um, I, I, you know, myself, I can't, I can't do anything like that. I, I really feel like most of the time I'd rather be listening to something that I've created mm. than listen to something else because there's a universe of concepts and there's a universe of notes and it's there for you. You don't have to hear someone else do it. Mm. You know, you have to hope that what you just did, somebody else did just do it at the same time. It's going to put it out before you. True. I'm all, you know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. Mm -hmm. It's a very funny thing. Mm. And, and would, would, would you sort of say it's harder now uh, than it was, say, back in 1989 when, uh, you know, when, when you first started writing as, as, you know, with the band and so on? so much easier now. I mean, the process is like, uh, we've got it down to, it's incredibly scientific, but it's as easy as tying your shoes right now. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, we've just got so focused and we can work so quickly and, you know, 
we know when something works mm-hmm. very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't, goodbye. <laughs> On to the next thing. Um, Nick and I, we started this band called TV Mania, and we decided to do the Blondie thing, that mm-hmm. we, you know, these songs we produce for them. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, we've written a rock opera. You know, we have three <laughs> albums of material. It's called Bored with Prozac and the Internet. <laughs> the first one is finished and ready to come out. Uh-huh. Uh, and the, the second two uh, are, you know, just about, you know, two-thirds done. Excellent. And, you know, that's a lot of music. That is. And that's a very kind of ambitious, so, um, you know, endeavor. So. We, we did it. You know, uh-huh. we, we, we have it uh, scripted and, you know, there's characters and there's a story and it's Excellent. all there. You know, it's like, wow, how do we do that? Yeah, and yeah. wow, it's only been three months. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. Or five months, whatever. Yeah, but, yeah. And, uh, it was incredible. Yeah. Well, it was... Uh, and now the Duran machine is working the same way. Right, right. And, you know, when we wrote those new songs in, in, from December till beginning of March, mm. you know, middle of December till the, to the beginning of March, six new songs. Mm. Songs like Buried in the Sand, mm. Silver Halo, Electric Barbarella, Michael, You've Got a Lot to Answer For, mm. uh, the lyrics for Big Bang Generation, mm. you know, I mean, a lot of really good stuff mm, mm, mm. in about uh, uh, that, that short period. Right, right. And then, and do, you, do you have a sort of a, 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 a preference track on the album, one that sort of stands out for you? Um, well, I just, I mean, the newest song is Electric Barbarella, and I mm. absolutely love that one. Um, mm. Who Do You Think You Are is one of the oldest songs, and I really, really love that one. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, that's a very special song. I'm very proud of that one. Right, right. And very pure, very short, but it's very kind of anthemic and also epic in a way. Mm, mm. But it's all in a little tiny package. <laughs> and... Uh, Will you guys be touring, touring the album at all, like you did with uh, the wedding album? We have absolutely no plan at all. Um, we do have a band that's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, we have bass players and drama that are ready to play. Uh, you know, to do like live television, mm-hmm. TV shows, maybe a small repertoire of five to eight songs. You know. mm-hmm. Of course, if you're playing Electric Barbarella, probably the Big Bang Generation, things like that will be mm-hmm. ready. Mm-hmm. Maybe a couple of old things, you know, uh, in case there's maybe a, some kind of appearance we have to do somewhere besides the television. I don't know. Mm. But actually going out and touring for, for a long period of time, playing a two-hour set, no, we have no plans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Uh, Warren, can I ask you one last favor, if I may? Sure. Uh, would you do a, a short ID for me? Um, I'm going to be putting oh, yeah, this. No uh, I'll be putting this out um, on a on a show that I do for College Radio <clears throat> here in uh, in Johannesburg. So uh, the name of the show is The Cutting Edge. So if you could say something like hi, this is it called uh, The Cutting Edge. Cutting Edge. Okay. Yeah. So play with it as you will, whenever you're ready. All right. Is it just for Johannesburg? Uh, well, it goes, it'll be syndicated countrywide, which is nice. So you'll probably hit okay. about 2 million people. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Ready? Yep. And, and you're going to be, uh, okay, okay, I got you. Hi, this is Juan Cugarulo from Duran Duran. You're listening to The Cutting Edge. You'll find all, oh, sorry, one second. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hi, this is Warren Cucarulla from Duran Duran. You're listening to The Cutting Edge, and you're going to find all about what we've been doing for the last three years. Enjoy. Excellent. Thank you, Warren. All right, man. Yeah, have, yeah have a good afternoon, and thanks again for your time. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.